interesting personal traits that are going to come back tomorrow. We've got some luminosity happening. Fabulous. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. Let's move out of that. Let's continue through the painting. Because we're in space. We're in space. We're all just a little nutty, a little spacey. And there's a, a nice a kind of terabaric background and it plays beautifully against the ochres and the blacks. And, um, now I'm just, I'm just painting the background. I'm painting the space behind the head. If we have another model come in and walk behind Lex and decide to be in our painting, we can put them in easily. So we're painting. How do you paint space? This is everybody's big question. Well, how do you paint something you can't see? You're painting it mentally. It's all in your head. And here's the way I like to, one way I like to think about it is, I just threw a little more yellow ochre into that for fun. Um, one way I like to think about it, if you're painting the background, you're painting the surface of the background behind it. You're literally doing this. And you're painting a wall. You're painting a wall. But what if you're not painting a wall? What if you're painting space? What if you're out? I'm painting space. This is the way I'm, my mind is thinking now. I'm painting this space behind the head. It happens to become visual when it hits the wall. So we're using that tonality. We're using that pitch. But the idea is, mentally, I'm not painting the wall. I'm painting the space. And the idea is, mentally, I'm not painting the wall. I'm painting the space. and ending up landing on the wall. It's a very strange way to think. I, I, I don't claim to be a normal person in any way. If I were normal, I wouldn't be an artist anyway. I know, am I laying this on heavily? No. I'm in space. If I'm painting the wall, I'll lay it on. I decide I want to paint the wall, I'll just lay it on big and fat. But for now, look, this is not a huge amount of paint. Nowhere near what I have there. Look at that opacity. This is almost a transparent paint. But the brush is loaded up, and I can get something going, get a sense of what's happening back here. And what am I doing with my sculpture? Shaping it. You're shaping the sculpture. And you're doing it from the inside out. You're going out and around all the time. My thinking is always going out and around. It's never starting out here and, and getting it correct and filling it in. Never. But if that works for you, do it. You know, this, this is my way of painting. And somebody else will have a different way of painting, and that's perfectly okay, too. And if I were Whistler or Sergeant, I would clear a path from here so I could charge back and look at my painting from a distance. Uh, so I'm just trusting you. If it doesn't look good, tell me. And I'm just thinking around my form here. It's unusual that you get to watch while it's portraits being painted. It's kind of a nice thing. Exact. How exact am I being? Not so much. Not, not so much. It will get exact. It will get more finished as we go along. But not yet. 
Yeah, there's no rush. There's no rush to do anything. No rush to finish your vegetables when you were a kid. There's no rush now. Let's put this on the shadow side of the head. How hard was that to do? It was wrong before. The rest said, oh, it had light on it. It's wrong. It's on the shadow side. How long did it take me to put it into shadow? Two seconds. Two seconds. How's the frontal bone? I'm thinking of the bone. I'm not thinking of the eyebrows. I'm not thinking of the, the beautiful eyes. I'm just getting the bone structure. Starting from the inside out. Always from the inside out. Always building towards the outside. Like getting a sense of the character. Anytime. Anytime you're ready. It's not that you have to wait to do anything. If you love the nose, and you love Lex's nose, and you want to paint that nose, and you just can't wait until you get into the second day, paint the nose. Paint the nose. But then don't be afraid to come back and touch it again. And don't be afraid. Everything is in play. Everything is in play all the time. It's a really hard thing to do, is keep everything in play from the beginning of the painting to the end. And I, I was lucky enough to get this from my teacher. He said when he was a student, he had a young woman with beautiful eyes. And he painted the most beautiful eyes he could ever paint. Then he spent the rest of the week trying to paint the head around the eyes. <laughs> and he said it looked horrible. <coughs> couldn't touch the eyes because he painted them so beautifully. But then he tried to paint the head around and it, it was just terrible. It was awful. So you can come back and you can work on the eyes. You can work on the nose. And you can put it in and you can finish it to death if you want. Just don't stop yourself from working on it again. Don't stop yourself. Don't say, I, that's as perfect as I could ever do it. I can never touch it. Don't worry about it. You did it once, you can do it a hundred thousand times. You can do it over and over and over and over again. Yeah, I want to get a sense of the side plane of the head. Just a sense. Just a sense. Just a sense. Just a sense of the hair. running my hand around the outside of that clay head that I'm sculpting. I'm still in space. I'm still moving. Mentally, I'm moving around. I'm not moving across the canvas. I'm moving around all the time. I'm moving underneath that beautiful cheekbone. It's a muscle. It goes around the mouth. It doesn't just come here where the shadow is. That muscle goes out, goes all the way around the mouth. I can think around the form as soon as I want, as late as I want, whenever I want in the painting. It's great being in the mouth. <laughs> about a little terra rosa, a little ochre, a little terra rosa. See, and I'm moving very freely between an earth tone palette and the cadmium palette. I can go back and forth both ways. Uh, one is a little less chromatically intense, one's a little more chromatically intense, but you can move back and forth. Yeah, this is, if you're playing music, imagine that you're just changing the key in the middle of the piece. And you change the key from, from A to, to B flat, and you're playing B flat, and then you can come back at any time you want and come back to A again. And you can very, be very flexible. I'm giving you guys a lot of permission to be flexible. 
now the light is becoming coming from this direction, so I just want to keep thinking that the light is moving and just building up this side of the head. Okay, we're getting nowhere in this painting. We're getting nowhere doing painting. You're making one move. I'm making a, a thought here. But I'm thinking four, five, six moves ahead. Say, what is that moving toward? I'm moving towards something all the time. So, so how do we, if I just do that, how do you know? How do you know what I'm thinking? If you don't know what I'm thinking, you don't know what I'm painting. See, this is just massing. This is just a very simple massing concept. And I'm massing and shaping and forming the head and drawing and painting all at the same time. Now the light is becoming coming from this direction, so I just want to keep thinking that the light is moving. I'm just building up this side of the head. Okay. See, we're getting nowhere in this painting. We're getting nowhere. We've been painting for an hour. You know, we've got a couple of blobs. But I'm already the second or third day into the painting. See, if you're a great chess master, you don't make one move at a time and wait to see what the opponent does. You're thinking four, five, six moves ahead. That's what you do in painting. You're making one move. I'm making a, a thought here. But I'm thinking four, five, six moves ahead. See, what is that moving toward? I'm moving toward something all the time. So, so how do we, if I just do that, how do you know? How do you know what I'm thinking? If you don't know what I'm thinking, you don't know what I'm painting. massing. This is just a very simple massing concept. And I'm massing and shaping and forming the head and drawing and painting all at the same time. Moving around the head all the time. See, if I see this on a Monday in the classroom, I'm thrilled. It's not much. I can see where the painting's going. See, very gentle. This is very gentle. And when I'm ready, I'll, I'll come in with lots and lots of weight. But when I'm ready, And a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, I'm not confident about my drawing, so I want to get it right first. Don't worry about your drawing. The drawing will be there. As long as you're sculpting, you can always add a little more and take your thumb and gouge a little bit out. And you can always adjust your sculpture so that it will, your drawing will come in line. I can't miss. I can't miss. And it just blends right in. And he starts looking a little healthier. They just bring a little bit of life into it. There's an awful lot we can do. We haven't gone to the beautiful ear out here. We can just start to get a sense of that ear. Start to bring a little bit of color. We can start to bring a little cadmium into that, so long as we know where we are in pitch. As long as we know where we are in pitch, we can do anything and start to bring a little bit of life into the lips. Start to give the lips some of that beautiful fullness. The underplane is, is quite lovely. To give the lips some of that beautiful fullness. The underplane is, is quite lovely. Anything. And I used to think that my teacher would come in and he would put a big black dot where the eye is. And it would look like a, a you know, Raggedy Ann doll. But then he modeled into that. 
and build around it. And it does, it's okay if it looks a little silly at the beginning because this is not the final stroke for the, for the mouth. It can look a little silly. But we're going to come back and we're going to model it. And remember, I'm, I'm painting five, six moves ahead. So what I'm putting down is only a part of what I'm thinking. It's leading towards something else. I'm always moving towards something else all the time. And that's got to look pretty silly from the back of the room, I would think. I think it'd be a pretty silly looking mouth at this moment. But I'm OK with that. I'm OK with that. Um, come back up into our flesh tones that we had. See, I'm still thinking about the space. I'm still thinking about the light. I'm thinking about everything all the time. All the time. My favorite, favorite <coughs> book in the world, my Bible. It's Robert Beverly Hale's drawing from the old master, drawing lessons from the old masters. Incredible book. It tells you, no. no. Repeat after me. I don't have to do anything. Let's take a little blue. And why am I mixing it over here? Why didn't I mix it over here? It's a different thing. This is the shirt section. That's the background <laughs> section. This is the back. That's the flesh. No, this is a dark. So I go to the dark end of the palette. And I'm taking a little ultramarine blue. And here's black. This is as far as I can go. I'm not going that far. This shirt is in light. I'm going to need something lower in pitch for the shadow. So I'm going to mix up something that is low in pitch. I already had some reds and umbers under here. Hey, don't forget, this is not just blue. This is red and blue and umber. And if I sneak in a little green, so what? See, who's going to say, that's wrong? Who's going to smack my fingers and say, that's the background, don't put that in there? Nobody. We're adults. This is, this is the adult class. This is great. you got to love being an adult. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's the most liberating thing in the world. So we had some blue. We had some umber. Um, we had some black. A little umber. Umber is reds and yellows. There's a little blue. Moving right into that red that we had. Right into the flesh tones. Um, mixing all kinds of stuff in there. And nobody can stop me. <coughs> I can bring a little bit of cobalt into it. And I can move up in pitch. And I'm just glancing quickly at at Lex, and when I glanced up there, what was I doing? I'm looking at the value of the shirt next to the value of the background. I'm seeing how they relate. Here's the background, here's the background, here's the shirt, here's the flesh tones. They're all related. They all relate when I look up there. So I'm going to relate them all. And I'm going to find something here that is Good. So I'm going to relate them all, and I'm going to find something here that is a good approximation of what I want. It may not be my final answer. See, this is not. Uh, this is, you know, it's not a game show. This doesn't have to be my final answer. I can still come back and change my mind. But look how gently I'm moving up in pitch very gently moving up in pitch all the time so that my shirt can be here or here or here or here or here. Or it could be all of those. And eventually it's going to be a wide range. But as a general middle tone, I think it's a pretty good same bet. It's a pretty simple thing. So why not? Where am I starting? On the outside of the shoulder and drawing it in? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right at the breastbone going over this front plane. <coughs> Let's do it with uh, take the big brush. The big brush loaded up with oil. See what did I do? This was my background brush. God forbid I use my background brush to paint the shirt. But why not? And here it is, right in the middle. And it's just 
going here, just moving right up around the neck. It's just as free as can be. And as I'm doing this, painting my relationships. Well, it's nothing is getting ahead of anything else. It's all emerging, all at the same time. <laughs> now, let's take the black. Let's go all the way down here. Let's reach for the bass notes. Now you're in your left hand, you're all the way down at the bottom octave. It's a great place to be. This is the, one of the great mysteries of painting are those bottom octaves. Everybody plays in the top. Everybody plays the right hand. You're playing in the light, and you're playing all kinds of subtleties and beautiful, lovely things playing against each other. But when you get down into the shadows, everybody just puts dark. Done. I don't want to paint the shadows. There are beautiful mysteries in shadows, beautiful mysteries. Paint nocturnes, paint nighttime, and you're playing all down at this end of the palette in beautiful subtleties, beautiful harmonies. Everything is below orange value, except for the moon. Or if you have snow, you can have some beautiful moonlight on the snow. But it's a fabulous place to play. <coughs> it's a great place to play. And Give you permission. You always need permission from everything. Everybody needs permission. But we can start coming in and finding uh, the side plane of the neck and the cast shadow of the shirt behind. And here's the shoulder. And it's coming around and it's pulling a little bit in that direction. As this pulls up, because the shoulder pulls up. It pulls the fabric, so we can go in that direction. There is a fabulous light, shadow, as we come back inside the t-shirt, the as it bunches up a little bit and pulls out. There's all, there's all kinds of great things that can happen. See, I don't have to draw this exactly at this moment. There's no rush. Flex is absolutely beautifully broad through the front plane. We can express all of that. We're going to think about all of that. At the moment, I just want to get it going. I'm just getting the whole painting moving. You know, why not take this beautiful dark that we have And it's got some blues, it's got some reds, it's got some blacks, it's got some umbers, it's got some everything. Because that's what nature is. Nature is a little bit of everything. And as long as we're down here, why don't we come in and start finding the corner of the head? Start finding from one side to the other, the corner of the head. Start finding the hair as it's starting to move up in such a beautiful way. Why not find it as it's coming back around? Is it so terrible to follow that thought from one place to another? No. None of this is a final stroke. Nothing like putting down is the last thing I'm ever going to do in that particular place. It's all moving and flowing. But I'm getting a sense of the portrait. I'm getting a sense. Here's a great moment where you are all the way down to black. Look at the brush I'm still using. It's, it's that big back brush. Uh, it's a great moment where the hair comes up and moves in this way. Let's go after that under plane. Fabulous. say we're not the luckiest people in the world. I get to do this. I get to do this every day. This is the most amazing thing. Now, smaller brush. I'm going to come back and, 
and back to my umber, back to my reds. Why am I not mixing it over there? It's in pitch. I know where I am in pitch. So I'm just coming back with some, some beautiful drawing and start to set the eyes into the head. See, maybe a little more red into that. See, just fabulous eyes. Does that mean I'm finishing the eyes now? No. I'm advancing. I'm placing them in the head. I'm starting to find where the, the ball is fitting into the socket. I'm just getting a sense of the life of that eye. And fabulous eyes. Fabulous shadow. And this is all, this is Sargent. This is all just painting values. If I'm painting in my own studio, I might make the shadows a little more transparent. Here I'm just going after. This is, because I'm painting quickly, this is quickly for me. Uh, this is all just painting the values evenly. See, in my studio, this would be a gorgeous transparency. Gorgeous. And then I'll bring the light back into it. But as I build up the light, you'll see these things getting more and more transparent. And it's great fun. It's another thing to play with. I just want things to play with all the time. So I have to have new toys. You know, transparency is a toy, color is a toy. Everything is something I can play with. And it just gets more and more exciting. All right, so let's move. And let's start to find a sense of the nose. See the same shadow. Same shadow. And just start to find a sense of how the nose moves. Not making the greatest drawing of the nose I've ever made, but just getting a sense of how the nose moves. Getting a sense of the shadow of the nose. Very simple, just light and shade, light and shade. It's very simple thinking so far. This is as simple as anybody can make it. We paint it light, we paint it shadow. Now, so many things you can do. So much to do. Van Dyke <coughs> said when you're painting a portrait, do as much as you can the first day said, because there's always plenty more to do after that. <laughs> and he's right. It's exciting. It's exciting. Now, what's missing here? We've got a leap from light to dark. Somewhere there's something happening in the middle. Let's go in. Let's find something happening in the middle. The easiest way to do that is to take the light and take the dark and take the background and find something right in the middle. It's not overthinking it. It's not thinking, oh, I, there's another color, there's another tone, there's another temperature, there's another this. It's just something in the middle. And for my own taste, I'll take that something in the middle and I'll throw a little orange and gray into it. And I'm can start to make a middle gray tone. Let's go take a break. Uh, I'll resupply. <coughs> With all the, let's take a little cobalt blue. Let's cool things off a little bit. <coughs> let's cool a little bit. And it's hard to cool anything under this light. This is a hot light. It's hard to bring that balance into the painting. And since I want to paint a portrait of this particular light, uh, I'm not going to get terribly cold. It's going to be warm. But I'm going back toward a, a grayer middle tone compared to the 
what was a little bit more colorful. We haven't gotten colorful yet. Nowhere near color yet. Not even close. We haven't gone up into the lights yet. We're still all playing in the middle. And we've gone down a little bit, we've dipped our toe into the cold water or the darks. And we retreated again and back to the middle mm -hmm. and sit in the sun for a little while. But, you know, we haven't gone all the way up and we're not all the way down and we still have lots to do tomorrow. <laughs> lots to do. Lots to do. Let me know what it's about. So here's the middle. Yeah, where, where now? Where does the middle go? Now that you put it on the palette, what am I supposed to do with it? It goes in the middle. It goes in the middle. There's a beautiful little side plane on the nose. Look at that in pitch. In pitch. You know, it's just, it makes a side plane. It's not a horrible dark, dark. It's not leaping off, it's not out of pitch. It's not a flat, it's not a sharp. It's right in pitch. So we can stay right in pitch as we start passing over the side plane of the head. We can start finding, there happens to be a beautiful, there's an awful lot of light in the back of the room coming back towards the shadow. So we're not gonna have a dark, dark, dark shadow. We're gonna paint the light that we have. We're going to paint what we have. And it, you know, it's always a fabulous thing. No matter what you're painting. We're doing a, uh, a still life in a terrible situation in Vermont. They have at the local art center, they have studio, they have art. How am I going to sculpt that? And how much of that reflected light from the indirect light from the far side of the room is coming up? under the nose and shaping the nose. And this is still with a big fat brush. I haven't done anything small yet. Nothing. Nothing small yet. Because I've got two days. Yeah, I'm going to make you all come back tomorrow. <laughs> this, is, this is the beauty of painting, is you can <coughs> manipulate people and make them do whatever you want them to do. You can make them look at this part of the painting, or you can make them look at that part of the painting just by organizing it. And Rembrandt always makes you look right into that person's eye every time. Mm -hmm. And Chuck Close doesn't want you looking at any part of the painting. He wants you to look all over the place. He doesn't focus anywhere. He makes you wander around. You can't stop and just take in a Chuck Close painting. And he keeps your interest. He's moving around all the time. He won't let you stop and rest anywhere. In this little part, there's a, another little image with another little exciting thing happening. And he's just manipulating you. Rembrandt manipulates you by focusing you. The Philip Glass manipulates you by repeating things over and 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 over. I'm going to do this for 10 hours. So if you want to take a break, go right ahead. And over and over and over and over. And he's manipulating you. He's getting you into a mindset. He's getting you into a mindset where he can force you to think whatever he wants you to think. Make you feel what he wants you to This beautiful passage that I keep coming back to. It. See, it's, it's an important part of the portrait. I love this passage as we're turning the head and starting to move around this sculpture. And I love this as it starts to pull out this great muscle that holds in the eye, starts to come out and pass out here in a half tone. Am I putting big fat blobs of paint on now? No. I'm very gently moving through the portrait. Hey, why not some light on the side plate? As we start passing off the forehead, as it goes, <coughs> not over, but back and around, it starts going into this half tone. And look, we're back to where we started again. But we can start to find, as the forehead pulls back, as it's pulling back this way, it starts to move back behind the head. We're just thinking all the time. That's just cleaning off my brush. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I haven't, it's, nothing's done yet, so it's okay. Uh, we 
can start fooling around this beautiful foam structure. And we're in a middle tone, so we can't be too far off. And we can do this. We can start finding the whole shadow <laughs> side of the head can lift up in pitch. I can lift up the ear. And I may push it back down again. This isn't done. This is a <coughs> What I'm doing is finding these relationships. Now, look how this moves. See, we had our nice terra rosa, <coughs> middle tone. It moves right in between. As we start moving off this front plane and into this side plane, there's nothing. It's just move, one moves from the other. And am I putting brush strokes on this? This is a big painting of brush stroke here, brush stroke there, brush stroke there, brush stroke over here. Am I scratching up the painting with brush? No, I'm sculpting, I'm modeling. This is essentially my thumb. If I'm doing clay, I'm gouging in to the darks and moving gently over the front planes. So everything is sculpting all the time. I haven't done, I haven't thought of this as, as a painting since I started. I'm not doing a painting. I'm sculpting a colorful sculpture in the round. It's a bizarre way to think, but I'm okay with that. It's okay to be bizarre. See, now I'm moving back up into the lights. <coughs> not even, I haven't touched the white yet, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I haven't touched it. I haven't even tinted anything with white. I'm not even close to that. So why not? What am I waiting for? What are you waiting for? Look at that. Brilliant. This is brilliant. If it's brilliant here, it's going to be brilliant there. Okay, we're painting. There's a very slight difference between painting light and shade tones. Between painting a light tone and a shadow tone. And painting something luminous. And I'm going to paint something luminous. Very subtle thing. You're using the same paint, maybe even using it the same way, but your thinking is different. See, it's always the thinking. Whatever you're thinking comes out on the canvas. If you're thinking, I'm not sure about this, it comes out on the canvas. If you're thinking, I don't like what I'm doing, <laughs> it comes out on the canvas. If you're thinking, I'm a god, this is amazing. <laughs> The ego comes out. It may not be the greatest painting in the world, but the ego comes out on the canvas. I have a, a friend who was, didn't turn out to be a very successful painter, but he had the, I'm thinking about what I want to say here. And let's go into, oh gosh, let's take a little Terra Rose. I'm pushing up in pitch. I'm pushing up just a tiny, tiny bit, tiny bit. So as I come up here, look, it's, you probably can't even see it from a distance. I'll bet you can't see a single thing I'm putting on here right now. And that's okay. That's <laughs> not wrong. See, this is your, your slogan you're going to take away with you. That's not wrong. See, when you put it on, when you have your, your painting moving, and I like to say this in the classroom, when you have your painting going, and it all seems to be harmonious, but it's all very sort of harsh and bizarre and the color's wrong and the drawing's wrong, but it all works together because you're doing it all the same thing. It's because you have a terrible diet. You're basically painting a painting of a terrible diet. You're painting potato chips and soda and hot dogs and hamburgers and they all go together beautifully. But what you really need to paint, make the painting beautiful is some greens. You need some broccoli. See, and I'm going over the form. I'm thinking over this form. I'm thinking over the forehead as we're moving out. And everything is moving. Every, I haven't gone back to the palette. Again, I'm using that same brush of paint. I loaded it up with paint. <laughs> I can still put a big fat opacity on this painting if I want, without going back to my palette again. Because I've got all this paint. And I can either use it in a big brush stroke or I can move it gently. But uh, people will say when you're doing this, you're 
blending. I'm not blending. <coughs> blending is a flat concept. <coughs> blending is mixing two things together and coming up with something in the middle. What we're really doing is modeling over the form. We're modeling form. We're not just blending two colors together. Never blend. Never have a flat thought in your life. If you want to paint <coughs> the way I'm talking about, you never have a flat thought in your life until you're painting something flat. If you're painting a wall, paint it flat. That's OK. But if you're painting form, don't paint it flat. Don't paint it as a wall. Just bring a little bit of color into it. See, I love this little terra rosa coming off of the nose. And look how simple. <coughs> Am I painting any one thing? No, I'm painting everything. All the time. Everything, all the time. Right out of that side plane. The pitch is close enough. See, because I have control of the pitch, I know I can go right into that side plane and pull this out. And I know I can go over the light plane and very gently move into the shadow side of the head. And it's absolutely fascinating. There are just endless things you can do. See, I mean, that's going okay. That's going. Everything's going okay. Everything's moving on the front plane. So where am I going to go? Into the background. I don't want the background to wait. See, it was waiting and waiting and waiting. And where did I go on the palette? Right in the middle. See? Oh, but it had the, the short color. Oh, but it had the flesh tone. It's in the middle. It's in pitch. It's in pitch. And it might be a little bit different than what I mixed before. But that's fine. It's not paint by number. It doesn't have to be, I mixed the right color for the background, and now I must make a big pile of it and save it here forever until everything is done. It, it's not. It's not. Everything is alive. Everything moves. So let's make this, I'm going to bring a little more ochre in than I had the last time. And because I already have some paint there, I'm painting into the wet. I'm painting into the wet. Here's some yellows and some blues and some grays. And I know where I want to be in pitch. Okay? That's the key, is that I know where I want to be in pitch. And what color do I want to make it? Everybody's going to see it differently. Everybody sees it differently. You know, my wife, when, I, when we first left the classroom, my wife and I would set up a still life, and we'd both paint the exact same still life in the exact same light. We'd be three feet from each other, and her painting would be cool, and my painting would be warm. And they would both look like the still life. So, beautiful. Let's take a little bit of white. Let's liven it up. Let's really make it a little more colorful. And why am I still mixing here if I'm adding white to it? Because I'm going to end up here in pitch. I'm going to end up in pitch. Instead of using a gray, I'm going to make this with color. And I am going to lift it up a little bit. And I'm going to lift it up a little bit in pitch. Are you guys still with me? Is this the most boring thing in the world? I'm talking music. I know, but it has to have color. It's the same thing. It's it's my piece. Move it. Let's move it again. And pick it up half a step. You're playing half notes. Look, it's hardly anything. But it goes up a little bit. It goes up a little bit. And look how exciting. Look how exciting. This is powerful. This is really powerful. Am I still painting the space? Yeah, I'm still painting the space, but I'm landing on the wall behind. See, I'm, I'm landing on the wall behind here. And when I want to go behind the head, then I'll soften up and come back on the other side. 
and paint right behind that, come out on the far side. And amazingly, and such a fact, it's a beautiful thing. Here it just goes almost into the same, this is just a, a half step darker on, on the side plane of the head. It's just a half step darker. And I can make it a half step. And I'm going to leave the, the cast shadow of the head out. For now. I might put it back in tomorrow. I'm unpredictable. Now, is this just background? It can be. Can it come back and play on the head somewhere? Yeah. Why not? I don't have to separate everything. It can be part of the flesh tone. And I can go there because I know where I am in pitch. I know exactly where I am in pitch all the time. And I know if I want to bring it back as a, uh, gosh, a little bit of this underplaying and bring some color back into the head, it can come in and nobody's going to know it's the same color. Nobody's going to know that's your background. And nobody's going to care. Nobody cares about any of this stuff. They only care about how they feel when they look at your painting. They don't care how well you paint it or how badly they paint it. They only care about how they feel. And they're right. They're the only ones who really care are the other artists. And then we go up to the museum and we rub our nose on the little Pietus Christus monk, the Carthusian monk, and look at the little fly that he painted at the bottom of the ledge. And we're rubbing our nose on it. And luckily, it's a small painting. So it's no bigger than this palette. So here, we're having some thoughts. See, we're, having, we're making a middle tone. And this becomes gray. This green that we have in the background against the flesh tones starts to turn gray. Starts to turn gray. And it's modeling into the eye socket. And look at the brushes I've used so far. They're all pink fat brushes. This is the tiniest brush. And most people would use that for the background. But, you know, because we're not in a rush, we can just keep thinking around. Look how this comes in here. Look how this comes in here. It starts to play into the, the shadow side of the neck. It's amazing. In there. As long as I know where I am in pitch, I can do anything. Okay, well, let's do. Well, let's keep shaping the head. Let's keep shaping. Well, here's our beautiful flesh tones. Well, let's rise up a little bit. Okay, up into the to the yellows <coughs> and the whites. See, I'm just lifting it up. And because it's electric light, we can't go very high up. It's not luminous enough. So we can only go so far. But we'll go as far as we can without making it look like natural light. Okay, let's see if we come up here where this light is coming off of this bone and lift it up a little bit. Right on that bone. It's coming off of the the nasal bowl. We can start to lift it up a little bit. See, and these are big bone strokes. And you can, I know everybody's going to want to look at it later, but these are big bone strokes that are on here. And we can start to find some modeling. What if we start to come in to start to find the ball of the eye? See, you can't put the highlight on until the end. Baloney. You can put it on as a third stroke if you want. If you have a middle tone and a shadow, you can put on a highlight. You don't have to wait. And what if there's a light in there? And I'm going to come back and remodel these things. What if there's a light on the lower lid? <coughs> then we start to find the eye. And we start to find the, the mass of the head. And as this starts to pull up into the hair, okay, all kinds of things are happening can start coming back off the far side. And a little bit of light jumps into this tiny little side plane of the eye and comes 
off the, the side plane of the ball of the eye. And just a tiny bit. You can watch it move across the head, down and onto that top plane, back onto this. Back, this drives back onto the zygomatic arch. And we can drive it back there. And is it finished? Is that a finished stroke? No. Nothing's finished. Nothing's finished. I just keep repeating. Nothing's finished. We're in the very beginning stages of the painting. And here's the, the light as it comes off of the far side of the shadow of the nose and starts to build onto this mass as it comes up and rises up and starts to pull down and around the mouth. And we're starting to get a sense of where we're going to go with the modeling. We're not modeling yet. We're not modeling yet. We're not doing anything yet. We're still starting the painting. And I'm going to say that at 4.30 tomorrow. We're just starting the painting. <laughs> and then before you know it, you're ready to sign it. Although you haven't done anything yet. You're still starting the painting, but you're ready to sign it. And if you can think that way, then you never have to worry about the finishing stroke, the finishing this, the finishing that. It will all finish. As you're moving your thumb around your sculpture, and you start digging in a little bit, and all of a sudden you're, you find that you're modeling the eye coming around this beautiful form around the nose. See, and at some point, we'll, we'll go in and we'll model that one. We're getting a sense of what's happening. And this is just a sort of a big blobby painting at the moment. But it will refine. Here's the, the top plane of the chin going out. You start to catch the ear. Coming in on this side, picking up the light. We're moving right around this jawbone.